let's pivot to some other breaking uh, news in the political front to get back out to our deputy political uh, editor, Sam Coates. Sam, you told us uh, earlier in the show uh, that uh, the new job that um, Angela Rayner was getting, it, uh, of course, pushed Lisa Nandy out of her role. What's she getting instead? She's getting what is to all intents and purposes, a demotion. Lisa Nandy will be, in the words of Labour, because this isn't a formal job to shadow, she has been appointed Shadow Cabinet Minister for International Development. Now, let me unpack the significance of that. There is not a Cabinet post anymore for international development. Uh, Boris Johnson scrapped the Department uh, for International Development. So, in effect, she will be a probably minister of shadowing the Minister of State level. She'll be a sort of shadow number two in the Foreign Office. This is unambiguously a demotion. She will still uh, attend uh, Cabinet. Uh, but nevertheless, this is Lisa Nandy having her wings clipped by the Le Labour leader. And it's a particularly brutal act by Keir Starmer because it was not that long ago that Lisa Nandy was the shadow foreign secretary. Uh, so the number one uh, shadowing uh, the Foreign Office, not the number two. Uh, and so this will be a difficult uh, pill, uh, pill to swallow, but um, uh, swallow she has done. I've got a, a quote from a source close to Lisa Nandy. This says, we are proud of the work Lisa has done, spearheading some of the most exciting policy in housing and devolution. Lisa is a team player and looks forward to getting stuck in to her new role. Uh, so the choice for Lisa Nandy, very bluntly, was to accept this demotion from Keir Starmer and stay inside the tent or to walk out altogether uh, and probably be more difficult from the back bench. She's, told that she's chosen the first of those two options. She is remaining, uh, and she is uh, regarded by some in the Labour Party, in the Labour movement, uh, as a good TV performer. Uh, so she will continue to sell, steer, uh, sell Keir Starmer's message. The, the suggestion was always people around Keir Starmer didn't quite trust Lisa Nandy, uh, 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 thought that she was loyal enough to him personally. She took him on uh, in the leadership contest, uh, was a bit of an outsider. He won. I, I think their relationship has always, on a personal level, uh, been a little bit rocky. Uh, but now one of the key bits of the jigsaw uh, has been revealed. Lisa Nandy uh, to be the number two in the Foreign Office, or in their words, uh, Shadow International Development Secretary. Sam, Sam, literally 30 seconds. What, what, what could be the most high-profile move left? Do you think we've had the most high-profile yet, or we don't know? I think there's still lots to come. Let's see what Keir Starmer wants to do. If this is a, if that's it, it's a bit of a mini reshuffle. But let's see how the day unfolds. Pivot to some other breaking. The first major change: Deputy Labour leader Angela Rayner has been appointed Shadow Leveling Up Secretary uh, and Shadow Deputy Prime Minister. Well, our Deputy Political Editor Sam Coates joins me now. And Sam, the, the headline so far is this move for Angela Rayner. J just explain to us the significance of it for someone, of course, who in the past Sir Keir Starmer had clashed with but is on better terms today? That's right. Well, uh, so this is the first reshuffle that Keir Starmer has done, this big proper reshuffle since a rather chaotic affair in May 2021. He's going to be looking to stamp his authority. And so the, probably the biggest move of this reshuffle has been to take Angela Rayner, who is elected as deputy of the leader of the Labour Party. Labour leader Hazard Angela Rayner has been appointed shadow levelling up secretary uh, and shadow deputy prime minister. Well, our deputy political editor, Sam Coates, joins me now. And Sam, the, the headline so far is this move for Angela Rayner. J just explain to us the significance of it for someone, of course, who in the past Sir Keir Starmer had clashed with but is on better terms today? That's right. Well, uh, so this is the first reshuffle that Keir Starmer has done, this big proper reshuffle since a rather chaotic affair in May 2021. He's going to be looking to stamp his authority. And so the, probably the biggest move of this reshuffle has been to take Angela Rayner, who is elected as deputy of the, leader, of the Labour Party, so has her own mandate, and to give her a government department. So until now, Angela Rayner has had a kind of floating brief as Keir Starmer's deputy. She's in, in, been in charge of all those kind of work issues, labour issues, employment uh, relation proposals, uh, and uh, shadowed some elements of cabinet office. So she's been going after ministers uh, on the Tory side who they think have broken rules or misbehaved, and she's led on all of that. Now she's been given a big government department in order to shadow that, and it's the levelling up department. So this means that Angela Rayner will be in charge of trying to help communities in deprived areas do better uh, and be put, of, um, put in charge of kind of Labour's uh, mission to improve uh, communities. Uh, this is a big deal. It means that uh, Angela Rayner... 
uh, will face Michael Gove across the dispatch box. Now, some had characterised that move potentially as something uh, of uh, a demotion. So it comes with a couple of big, important uh, baubles along the side. First of all, for the first time, even though Angela Rayner had said it before, Keir Starmer had not, now he is confirming... Angela Rayner will be Deputy Prime Minister. So she's now Shadow Prime Minister uh, and she'll take the title of Deputy if Labour go into government. And she also retains that work brief, which is quite important uh, for the left of the party. They were fearing if it was taken away, it might be uh, watered down. We don't know what happens to Lisa Nandy. She's currently in the levelling up brief, or was until about uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, Jim McMahon, the Environment Sec uh, Shadow Environment Min uh, Secretary, uh, has also written to Keir Starmer asking him to, uh, to stand down. He's been the victim of abuse and also had health problems. So, Sam, I'm interested here, if, if this continues to play out with none of the top three officers of state being reshuffled, that, that indeed this, this move with Angela Rayner perhaps is the most high profile of, of the moves, what does that imply about both the standing of the Labour Party and Sir Keir Starmer as things are? Does he not need to do a bigger reshuffle because things are going so well? But perhaps more tellingly, his power uh, internally, his grip on the party... Could he, should he be doing more, but he's just not able to? Or is he just so relaxed that things are going so well that there's no need? If I'm completely honest, Wilf, I'm not going to call the end of the reshuffle. I'm not even going to say that Angela Rayner will be the biggest news by the end of the day. We just don't know. We haven't had it confirmed that all three top officers of state are definitely uh, staying in place. Uh, what we do understand is that those shadow cabinet ministers who represent those five missions uh, that uh, Keir Starmer has been spelling out, they will stay in place. That leaves an intriguing option, actually, uh, that they could do something about David Lammy, but they may not choose not to. Uh, he is in favour with some, uh, not with others. He's had uh, controversies in his role as shadow foreign secretary with the fact that he's got a second job on a broadcaster at the weekend, which takes up some of his time and for which he receives quite a lot of cash. That has made him unpopular with some in the party. So let's uh, we'll keep an eye on him. But more generally, you ask about Keir Starmer's power, and he is at the height of his internal power in many ways. He's dealt with many of his left critics. He ha now has the flexibility to pick the team that he needs. That's not something that many Labour leaders of the recent past could say. I got up with Ed Miliband and asked him, he's the shadow, uh, he shadows climate change, uh, whether or not he wanted to stay in this job. And also we had a bit of a chat about what it's like being Labour leader since he was in the job once upon a time.